I already made a full hair tutorial in Blender. You can check it out on the top right corner, but that was using particle system. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it in the new hair system, which uses geometry nodes. Geometry nodes are great, since you can make a lot of cool things with it. But since it's relatively new, I'm sure there are a lot of people that don't even know how to work with it properly. Especially people who just wanna make characters. They don't wanna get drowned into thousands of nodes. That's why I made this system that gives you a lot of options with only few clicks, and it requires zero knowledge of geometry nodes so you can go straight to creating hair without spending two hours connecting nodes together stick around to see how it works but first we're gonna go over the basics of the new hair system from adding the hair to grooming it and other stuff so if you know the basics skip to the next part let's go Select the mesh, shift A and in the curves click on empty hair, we can't see anything right now. So control tab and go to scalp mode. This scalp mode is different than the original. In this one we do the hair. First one we got is the add tool. On the top we got radius, which is the size of our brush. You can also press F and drag to the left or right to change the size. Then we got count. Count is the amount of hair you want to place at once. If you put it on 1 and hold click, it places the hair in the direction of the mouse. If you increase it to 2, it places 2 hair by each click. For example, if you want to make something really hairy like these balls, you can increase the count and spread the hair all over the mesh. In the curve shape, we got few options. Length is the length of the hair. The less amount you put in, the shorter the hair is gonna be. In the bottom, we got points. Each hair strands made out of points. More points equals more flexibility. For example, if I put one with 8 points, then try to groom it, then make another one with 30 points and groom it, you don't see any difference because we gotta go to the render properties and in the curves, change the shape from a strand to a strip and add a few additional subdivision to smooth out hair curves. Now if I squeeze the hair in the left, you see it doesn't bend very well due to its low point count. But in the right, if I squeeze it down, it bends in a lot of areas because it has a lot more points. In the curve shape, we also have an intercept section. We got three options. First one is length. If you enable this one, you see the length in the bottom gets disabled because now length is calculated by your distance on the closest hair strands you already have. For example, if I put three hair strands with different length, then enable this option. Every hair I put in, the length is going to be something in between. Closer you get to a hair, the length is gonna be closer to that one as well. Now if I shape these hair strands and enable shape and point count, just like length, it gets the shape and point count from the closest hair strand. Kinda like keyframes in animation, where you place two keyframes and the software calculate the frames in between. Just remember to hold click for it to work properly. In the active tool, we got other settings. A spacing is the distance between each hair strands. So if I decrease it, we get more hair strands in the line. Lower the number, the closer they get to each other. You can also change the stroke method to other things like line. When you hold click and draw a line, it places the hair based on the spacing. Next we got delete brush, which is obvious what it does. It removes the hair strands. Density brush is amazing. When you click on it for the first time, it's on auto mode, which means it removes and add the hair strands based on the distance you put in. You can change the distance on top, but better way would be pressing shift R and drag to the left or right. You see some dots appear on the screen, which tells you the amount of hair in that certain area. If you drag to the left, dots gets closer together. If you drag to the right, dots get away from each other. When it was at your desired density, you can click one time to close it. Now when you start drawing, the same amount of hair will appear on the mesh. You can also enable the interpolate here as well for it to stay on the same shape as the other hair strands. When it's on auto, you can shift R again and drag to the right to get the dots further from each other. Now when you draw on the surface, it removes the hair strands and only leaves the amount of hair you want. If you just want to remove the hair strands, you can switch it to minus or switch it to plus for when you want to add hair strands. Moving on to the comb. Using this tool, you can groom the hair based on the size of your brush. If you don't want to move the hair strands so intensely, you can decrease the strength so you have more control over the movement of the hair. One tip for better grooming is to click and drag outside of the hair so it moves the top half of the hair smoothly without any harsh edges. Then we got sphere and projected. Default is on sphere which means it moves the hair based on its position. It only moves that specific hair that you're grooming and the hair strands around it. So if you move the hair in the front, the hair strands in the back will be untouched. But when you switch to projected, it doesn't care about the distance anymore. Instead, it moves everything based on the brush. So when you click and drag the hair, everything in the brush area will follow the brush. Without considering distance, we also have fall off. You can change the shape of the brush. For example, if you drag this down, brush gets pointier and pinches the hair in the middle. You can mess around with it and experiment with different curves to see if it's useful. Next will be a snake hook. Using this one, you can stretch out each hair strand to whatever height you want. Just drag the tip of the 
strand and stretch it to any direction you want. There is no limit but the count. It will get junkier and rough around the edges when you stretch it too far. Grow and shrink is the next one. It's pretty useful as it sounds. On default, it increases the length of the hair strand. But if you go to active tool settings and switch the direction to subtract, now when you click and hold on the hair, it's getting shorter and shorter. Next one is pinch. What it does is that it pulls the hair strand close to where you hold the click. This is very useful. But when you want to add some irregularities to the hair, especially beard because in a lot of people, beard is messy and goes all over the place. Using this one, you can pull a bunch of hair strand to a direction you want really fast. Puff is kind of obvious. When you have a bunch of hair clumped together tightly, you can puff it up using this tool and untangle it. Smooth brush comes in when you already messed up. You bent the hair too much and it's all tangled up to each other. Smooth brush rounds up the edges and make the strand smoother, resulting to much cleaner hair strand. But remember, it only works good with lower point counts. So if you have too much point in your hair strand, it might not work as well. Next one and one of the most important tools is a slide tool. Using this tool, you can move the whole strand to a different location from its roots. This is really good for defining the hairline and getting it cleaner edges. Let's not forget about selection tool. First, make sure show overlays is enabled so you don't get confused like me. Then when you click and draw on these hair strands, they stay white while the other hair strands will turn gray. Now when you pick up comb, you can only groom these hair strands and it won't affect the other ones. This will come in handy when you have tons of hair in one place and you want to start only a few hair separately than the other ones. Another thing that helps with the selection is to switch the select mode to curve. This way, when you click on a hair strand, full hair strand will be selected. So you can easily select any hair strand you want by clicking on it only one time. Then start grooming it. That's the wrap for the basic tools. Now it's time to move on to the geometry nodes. Now here's the hair system I made using geometry nodes that you can download on my Gumroad for free. Also shout out to both of these channels for their great tutorials. I made each frame a different color so it would be easier to access. Also made the most important nodes a brighter color than the frame. So if you don't even know a single thing about geometry nodes, you can easily look for the colored nodes. I also made another version which is similar but I brought out all the settings to the modifier section so you can easily access the hair settings straight from the modifier settings. Something like the old particle system. You can download Download this one as well as the practice file on my Gumroad and Patreon page. Link in the description. Now let me show you how it works. I brought out my head for example. I also made a couple of hair on the top and we are gonna use it as a test subject. First go to file, append and double click on the blend file I included in my gumroad. Go to node tree folder, in there you find a node named main hair. Double click on it to import. Now click on the hair and in the modifier properties click on this icon and choose main hair. In the render properties make sure the curves is on strand and you have at least two additional subdivision. Now hover your mouse to the top left corner and drag out a new window. Click on this icon and change it to geometry nodes. Now we got all the necessary nodes ready in only few clicks. First find stick to the mesh section. In the object info click on the picker then click on the head. What it does is it is stick the roots of the hair to the surface of the head so it wouldn't fall off. Then first one in the left we got hair amount. By increasing the amount number it adds hair strands between the hair and make it fuller. I'm not gonna increase it too much so we can see what we're doing for the next nodes. In the bottom we got the spread. Using this value right here we can increase the distance between the hair strands and spread them all over the head. Next one will be points count. In this one you can change the amount of point count of each hair strand. For example if you put one we get a straight line that doesn't bend and goes through the head. Two will be a bent line. Then by adding more and more counts strands get smoother. In the bottom we got clumping. This value is for clumping the root of the strand and this one for clumping the tip. The farther we get from number zero, tip of the strand will be farther from each other and closer to zero means tips gets close to each other. It's the exact same thing for the roots but instead of tip, roots gets closer and farther. Moving on to the next one. By increasing the exponent, it ignores the clumping from tip to root. Larger number meaning it gets closer to the root. Top right of the clumping we got random length. This comes in handy when you don't want all the hair strands have the same length. By decreasing the mean and max, you can shorten the hair randomly. Next we got hair thickness. This one is the thickness of the root and the other one is the thickness of the tip. You can easily increase the numbers to thicken up the root or tips. In the bottom we got noise. Noise adds irregularities to the hair so it looks more natural. At the end of it, you can change the intensity of the noise. Then using this one, you can change the starting position of these noise. In the right we got curl. Obviously this comes in handy with curly hair. 
Using this one, you can change the intensity of this curl. And in the bottom, you can change the scale of the curls, meaning the amount of twirl in each hair strand. Also, you can change the shape of the curl using this curve node. After that, we got roughness. It's basically the same as noise, but the effects only happening to the half of the hair strands, resulting to more random and realistic hair overall. Since hair in real life is not perfectly soft unless you use some kind of product, so this brings up the realism a bit more. Let's not forget about the delete hair node. This might sound useless, but trust me, it's not. One way you can use it is to select the hair in the object mode, shift D to duplicate and escape to place it back. Using comb, groom it to the outside. Then back in shading, click on this icon to duplicate the geometry nodes as well, so we don't overwrite our geometry node settings. Now by increasing the probability, you can choose how much of the hair you want to remove. Then at the end, we got some hair sticking out, which results to much more realistic hair. In the next video, we're gonna make this hair using the exact method. Subscribe if you want to see that. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. To download the 3D files and real-time process of making these characters, be sure to check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.